Hey everyone, HMK here with another analysis and secrets on a Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Wow, I never thought I'd be able to do this one again. So, Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC got its first teaser trailer after the Kingdom Hearts 3 orchestra that happened not too long ago. And we're still in the midst of E3, so we could get more information. Now, note, this is a teaser. There's a lot more to come from this overall DLC package because we do know it's going to add a new scenario called Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. It's going to add a limit episode and boss boss and a secret episode on bosses and potentially more there's a lot to cover in this small teaser but it's very coherent like they're in big chunks so I'll be able to tackle them one by one and let's get right into the noise I'm very excited for this trailer let's do it right so so far uh, first off we have the E tanning up and stuff and then here we have a battle chop of the Keyblade Graver but it's cool because at various points in this trailer it gets all nasty and hazy and all digital like they're trying to remind us of something but if you guys remember this is where the new organization would meet up in the Keyblade Graveyard they would ditch their white thrones from the world that never was and they would come here and you know I, I dig the seats but I mean this is cool I guess here we have a mysterious figure the mysterious figure sitting at a point in the Badlands in the Key, uh, Keyblade Graveyard, right? Uh, there's a lot of talk right now saying that this is inherently or obviously Master of Masters. It's nowhere confirmed. Uh, there is no press release to this trailer released as of now. There was a press release attached to the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake announcement for the release date, but right now there is no uh, press announcement attached to the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind trailer, right? So here we have another black coat, but uh, obviously we're going to know who this is in a little bit, so this is no secret. Now, the reason why a lot of people think this is the Master of Masters is because this whole trailer is not voiced by the way uh he is very you know excited he likes to do a lot of things with his hands he's you know like all over the place so that's really cool uh it's a really good uh note and a lot of people say it could be demix but i doubt it because demix has a very very uh i would say iconic type uh, organization coat where he has these shoulder pads or whatever but you know they kind of ditch those a little bit in Kingdom Hearts 3 but uh, we'll have to wait and see. The coat wards off darkness. Now this is young Xerath meeting with I believe the Master Masters. I have a, a couple of reasons why I think this is the Master Masters. Oh well just not just because of the you know the way he moves his hands around or whatnot. So the big kicker already we have a huge bomb saw and I cannot say this looks great. Oh my goodness, Benjamin, Diskin, more alliance, give that boy a paycheck. But young Xehanort is here with silver, and I want to make it note silver, not golden eyes, which is a trademark of Xehanort as Nomura confirmed. Golden eyes is something that's always been attached to Xehanort, and we know uh, from the release of Kingdom Hearts 3 that Kid Xehanort, not Young Xehanort, this is the person that the fan base have gathered to call Young Xehanort. Of course, you know, we already know this guy as Young Xehanort, he's officially known as Young Xehanort, but the form of Xehanort, which seems to be a bit younger at the chess match playing against Young Ericus, uh, we've come to call him Kid Xehanort, right? And Kid Xehanort had uh, silver eyes. Young Xehanort still has silver eyes, so I'm going to let this play out, but I'm going to give my theory on uh, what this goes down as, because we're going to have a little bit more context that will attach itself to the theory in this breakdown. He says, told ya, so how'd it go? Like, like that's very master of mastery, mastery, the world tour. Now, that's very important. Remember that, all right? We're going to get to that. And once again, Hazy, Young Xehanort takes a seat next to who could be the Master Master. And I like to point out, Young Xehanort has his pointy ears, but he doesn't have his golden eyes. Which is uh, something that we should uh, <laughs> take a look at. I realize just how necessary I am. Now, remember these words. Now, check it, alright? Check this out, guys. The World Tour. That's a big thing when it comes to the secret reports and the history of Young Xehanort. In Secret Report 2, in Kingdom Hearts 3, it does get confirmed that Young Xehanort, uh, in order to engage in his pilgrimage to get the mark of mastery he took a tour of the world right so what is telling me is that this point in time a lot of people are believing this young xehanort at some point during the events of kingdom hearts 3 i believe it's way before the events of kingdom hearts 3 it is actually young xehanort's own life in real time in his existence i believe this is the first time xehanort has ever come into contact with the dark coat with the black coat with the organization coat the master of masters gave him the coat in order to travel the world safely using the power of darkness. This is the pilgrimage he talked about, then he just finished it up. So the Master Master's like, how'd it go? The World Tour, which was the pilgrimage that he talked about in the secret reports. This is before he got his golden eyes, and this is when he first got his uh, organization coat from the Master of Masters, right? Back when he was a kid. Now, this is funny. 
in an awful way, I realize just how necessary I am. Now, this quote is extremely important as well because it links all the way up to the point of Master Xehanort's reasoning throughout the games up to Kingdom Hearts 3, why he wants to use Kingdom Hearts to reset the world. This idea, this insight was instilled at this point in young Xehanort or in overall Xehanort's life because he toured the worlds and he saw how bad the worlds are, how much darkness there is in the worlds and why he needed a black coat and why he believes that the worlds need to be reset because he saw the worlds and he was like, yikes. I just realized how necessary I am. The worlds are awful. I'm going to use Kingdom Hearts to reset the worlds. And that is what set all the events in motion. Now, that this still doesn't explain where does he get his golden eyes. Another theory that, another pocket theory that a lot of people are getting, including myself, is that the Master of Masters uh, gives him the golden eyes. And no doubt, I hope Nomura does elaborate more on Xehanort's eyes in this DLC because literally, <laughs> like, the fact that he has silver eyes in this cutscene is a huge bombshell, and I feel it's leading to that through his uh, indication with the Master Masters. One little pocket theory I had about that is that the golden eyes were like a signification of a power that the Master Masters gave to Xehanort that allowed him to uh, body swap potentially or split his heart. Uh, the golden eyes signify that young Xehanort has this power now, but we're going to have to wait and see what uh, leads into that. Now, here's the huge thing, oh my goodness, boys and girls, playable Riku, and look at that, Sora's a partner, he's regulated to a partner, that's gonna be so funny, oh, you're doing great, kid, oh, I just, I wanna see how much Sora is gonna try and heal us in this point. Now, of course, the big thing is that Riku's gameplay is gonna be probably very similar to what we played him as in Kingdom Hearts 3, and he, yet, he, right now, he doesn't have a Link function because you know Sora has the links because of his heart, uh, heart binders right so there's no way for you know Riku to use links which is fine it's fine uh, so we're getting more playable Riku because we've played Riku before so you know this is something that we've done before it's not entirely new and here we have Aqua against Vanitas and Terra Zaynor playing as Aqua once again boys Blazaza and Spell Weaver and here is a big thing that I want to point out Ventus is a partner but Sora is not a partner. Sora is not a partner in this whole segment. Now, here is the part of the Omega Nut. Guys, Roxas is playable in Kingdom Hearts 3. Once again, he does not have a link function because the links, uh, Sora, only Sora can use links because he has those heart binders. And look at my boy go after Sykes. Now, there's a big thing when it comes to Roxas' gameplay and how it applies itself to the other people's gameplay that, are, that weren't playable in Kingdom Hearts 3, right? The first thing is that Roxas does not have his light shield up. Uh, if you guys remember, Ro when Roxas is a partner, uh, he starts off the battle using uh, bathing himself in light, and when he has that, he has no knockback, he's invincible, and he can cut through a lot of Psyx's invincible frames, right? So that was a big thing. He does not have this in the gameplay, so it looks like, you know, even though he has a lot of MP and a lot of HP, yikes, look at that! It looks like you will be able to get hit as Roxas, and, uh, man, I'm so ready to play this boy! I'm excited for this because we've played as Aqua before, we played as Riku before in Kingdom Hearts 3, but we have yet to play Roxas in anything other than Kingdom Hearts 2 and 358 over two days, and it looks like his gameplay is going to be very, very wild. Another big thing to take away from this is that, check it out, Axel, aka Lee, is a partner in in this segment that kind of is wild and does not make sense unless we apply this in a big way because in this segment after Roxas comes back Lee is down for Lee Axel whatever he's down for the count and Sora you play as Sora with Roxas and Shia as these partners if the original thought was going around where you know the gameplay is swapped around where you play as Roxas then Sora should be a partner in Axel's place because he should be down for the count after Xemnas body him but look it's the Seesaw Trio's going in! This is so nice! So, my biggest takeaway from this, uh, when you also look at Aqua's gameplay where Sora's not there, is one of two things. One, uh, you get to play as Aqua and Roxas during the time that you're waiting on Sora to show up and help you out. But that doesn't make sense because Roxas is not supposed to be until Sora shows up and helps uh, Kyrie and Axel, and Kyrie's not here by the way. So the other thought that I thought is that possibly part of the remind scenario, just part of the remind scenario, is that when you go back to the Keyblade Graveyard in the segments where each battle took place, there's going to be a battle gate. And once you activate those battle gates, you take on 
uh, another player. You go to the battle gate uh, in the area where you fought Terra Xehanort and Vanitas. You go then and then you play as Aqua in that battle gate. You go to the battle gate, which would be at uh, where Riku and Sora fought Zigbar and Dark Riku. And you play as Riku. You go to the battle gate where you fought Saiyax as Sora and then you play as Roxas. That's one idea I had in my head. If they have anything that were to supplement that or be bigger than that, I am all for it. Because if Mori rocks his gameplay, I'm down for that. Give me give me all the rocks his gameplay for the boy. Alright, so I really do believe that these are new additions to the overall game and not part of the secret or limit episodes. Alright, so oh, this is great. Now here is another big kicker. So... He has Oathkeeper again! Oathkeeper is back, guys! Oh my lord! Now, one thing, big thing to talk about with the Oathkeeper gameplay is that Sora gets a new form change, which looks very similar to the, to the ultimate form, but different and kind of better. Like, you can see the teeth of the Keyblade aligned on Sora's clothing, on his hood right there, and on his pants. Now, one big thing to take away from this is that Sora's form change animation is exactly like uh, the second form form change animation, right? But don't let that scare you because the gameplay in which Sora uses the Oathkeeper Keyblade is wild in a different form. That is some wild new gameplay. Look at that. Look at my boy going in. It looks so nice. I'm ready for this type of gameplay. Um, this form, I want to go ahead and call, you know, maybe Oathkeeper form or maybe Oath form or Promise form. Uh, you know, it's yet to be confirmed what the name of this form is, what the finish command is, because we don't have any type of menu overlay on this segment, which is nice. And, um, Nomura did confirm that the Oathkeeper, the new Keyblade that will be dropped, uh, at the same time as the DLC, will be free. So, Oathkeeper will be free. That's a good thing. It's not gonna be part of the paid DLC. Uh, it's gonna release at the same time as the paid DLC, and I'm down for it. Now, here's a couple of theories and thoughts I have when it comes to Oathkeeper, and possibly the return of Oblivion. Uh, we have Oathkeeper back. Uh, the more there are reports saying the more I said oh, we're only getting one Keyblade, but it's very hazy translations, all that good jazz. We could be getting Oathkeeper and Oblivion back, and Oblivion could give us an Oblivion form. You know, Oathkeeper gives us a white and gray form. Oblivion could give us a black and gray form or a black and pur purple form, whatever. And it could have the teeth of the Keyblade aligned on his clothes, just like Oathkeeper, and that would be dope. And also, if you guys didn't know. In critical mode, or I should say in the update for Kingdom Hearts 3, there are two proofs that you can get in the game. It's proof of passing memories and proof of oats, right? And if you look at those proofs, they have the, um, I would say, the motif of Oblivion and Oathkeeper. And the biggest thing is that Oathkeeper, of course, oaths, you know, uh, proof of oaths or whatever. Um, proof of promises, whatever, I'm sorry, proof of promises, which is an oath, you know, oath keeper, proof of promises. Now, proof of passing memories is a big kicker because the Japanese name for oblivion is, does translate to passing memories, or, you know, ob oblivion, you know, uh, memories that pass and stuff. That is what the Japanese name of oblivion translates to. So it could be possible that these proofs could be the key in order to unlock these keyblades, maybe off the bat, maybe you can earn them without getting those proofs, or maybe when you have those proofs, they get un uh, unlocked automatically. So that's something I have uh, in my head, and I'm really excited for that. Now, here is another huge kicker. The boy, Luxord, with Zigbar having a conversation. Zigbar, who are you? And then Zigbar looking all smug with a with a Luxord card. With a, but that Luxord card looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I can't see the whole thing because Luxord's like covering a lot of it, right? Obviously, Luxord threw the card at Zigbar, and he's like, Alright, it doesn't make a difference to me anyway. I'll just keep playing dumb. And then he, he he's out, right? And then can I... Okay, so we see the card here and it looks just like a, a, a nobody card. Now, can I talk about the amount of sass that Zigbar had with throwing that card away? He's like, yeah, it's like you know, uh, that's fine. No merit to me. I'll just keep playing dumb. And then Zigbar's like, get this thing off of me. Like, I just... I, I can't. The, the sass that Zigbar has throwing that card. He's like, he's like, like, this card is nasty, man. Get this off me. And then he gets off. The question is, who are you, Luxord? Now, this is a huge deal because Luxord, uh, of course, uh, he became a very mysterious character in Kingdom Hearts 3, especially since uh, he was one of the 9 through 12 that Xemnas was talking about. It's like, oh, the sleeping Keyblade legacy that dwells within you, and that he gives Sora a wild card when he is dispatched at the Keyblade graveyard. And apparently, according to Nomura, this Joker, Ace, wild card, whatever, 
is going to play an important part in potentially returning Sora from his fate as we saw at the end of the game. Now, if you guys didn't know, big spoiler alert, whatever, Zigbar is Lushu. Zigbar has been living through time and time again ever since the advent of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, Kingdom Hearts Key, all that stuff. And for him to have trouble understanding who Luxor can be is a huge exclamation point and a huge red flag. Because, like, if anyone should know what about everything that's going on right now, it should be Zigbar as Lushu. Uh, he has probably more knowledge than Xehanort ever did and stuff. And for someone to, like, you know, blindside him a bit like, Z like Luxord, for Zigbar, it's like, dude, who is this guy? Yikes. Zigbar, like, he he seems a little bit rattled, so who is the identity of Luxor? There's a bunch of threes being blown out of proportion right now, and I plan to cover some of them, but man, oh man, this, like, Luxor stands rise up. That is gonna be great. I can't wait to see how they develop these characters. And here we have the logo, which actually looks really dope. Uh, you can tell that the uh, overall logo is a bit darker. They did add a bit of shading to it. And that nice blue that comes into place, Kingdom Hearts 3. Remind. Oh boy, Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, baby. Oh, and I, I, I actually, I just noticed that. So, bef when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes into play, it's all dark because it's a darker shade. And then Remind, when Remind comes in, it lights it up because it's gonna enlighten us guys i cracked the code oh my god oh my goodness i'm really excited for this and e3 is still happening they confirmed coming this winter e3 is still going on the square Enix conference has yet to happen at this point and namora and yusoi and hashimoto are in the house so watch your mouth and it could be possible that they can get interviews done at the show floor that will give us more information about this DLC, especially through Yusoi. No more is probably gonna have his hands full with Final Fantasy VII Remake, but Yusoi is the man with the plan that will tell us more about this. I'm incredibly excited. So guys, what do you think about this breakdown and this analysis and secrets? If I miss anything, please leave it in the comment section below. And if you learned something, please hit that like button, share, subscribe for more. And until the next video, it's E3 time, boys. I've been HMK, and I will check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.